Thank you, Senator McAllister. Uh, Senator Kokoschke Moore. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. This is not my first speech. However, tonight I need to speak out on a matter of great importance. I have the utmost respect and admiration for the men and women that serve and have served in our Australian Defence Force. They are prepared to sacrifice their lives for our country to defend our fundamental liberties and way of life. Sadly, indeed disgracefully, too many men and women who have served in our Defence Forces have been treated with the utmost disrespect and indeed contempt when they have been abused from those within their own ranks. I became involved in this issue through my work with my now colleague, Senator Nick Xenophon, in 2011, after the so-called Skype sex scandal broke and made national headlines. Following the Skype incident, Senator Xenophon called for an independent, urgent review into defence abuse by the federal government. His call to the Minister for Defence for a review was galvanised after meeting with a victim from HMAS Lewin, who told him of the untold horror he had been subjected to in the 1960s. In April 2011, the DLA Piper review into defence abuse was announced. The review received around 1,300 submissions, with around 1,800 being deemed credible and within the terms of reference. In response to this, the government established the Defence Abuse Response Task Force, known as the DART, to assess allegations of abuse made to the review before 11 April 2011. Through the courageous actions of those people who suffered abuse coming forward and telling their stories, this truth has started to be revealed. We thought, hoped, that our ADF would have somehow been immune from such predatory individuals. We hoped that these rotten apples from within defence would be detected quickly and removed permanently from the organisation. But in far too many cases, this did not occur. In the case of HMAS Lewin, many who joined were mere children. From the 1950s through to the early 1980s, the Australian Defence Force failed to protect boys aged just 13, 14, 15, 16. They failed to protect them from older predators within the Australian Defence Force. These predatory members within the Navy have left a wretched legacy. However, the abuse went way beyond HMAS Lewin and went all the way to the Australian Defence Force Academy, known as ADFA. In November 2014, the then head of the DART, the Hon. Len Robert Smith, recommended that the government establish a Royal Commission to inquire into, report and make recommendations in respect to allegations of abuse the mismanagement of reports of allegations of abuse at ADFA. The notorious ADFA 24 case was highlighted by the DLA Piper Review as involving serious allegations involving 24 perpetrators at ADFA being involved in the physical, indecent and sexual assault of at least 26 female victims between 1996 and 1998. DART, under the leadership of Mr Len Robert Smith, investigated this issue that was so grave, so serious, that it warranted a Royal Commission. However, when the final report of DART was released quietly on the afternoon of Friday the 2nd of September, there was a baffling U-turn on the part of the DART. Inexplicably, inexplicably the new head of the DART, Robert Cornell Ao, who took over after the retirement of Mr Len Robert Smith, has walked away from this key recommendation for a Royal Commission, even though he was deputy to Mr Len Robert Smith when the recommendation was originally made. To understand why this change in position is so concerning, it is necessary to set out some of the background to the establishment of the DART, particularly the context of ADFA 24. It is very likely that for some years there have been in senior ranks of the ADF some individuals who have raped other members of the ADF and never been called to account for their actions. It is also very likely that for some years there have been senior ranks of the ADF Within those ranks, some individuals who were aware that their mates had raped other members of the ADF and who did nothing to intervene to stop the abuse and who never reported what they knew. There are serious questions as to whether rapists and their silent mates are fit to be role models and drivers of cultural change within the ADF. Furthermore, victims who have managed to stay in the ADF have to serve with these men. That must be very destructive for the victims. The longer the nation takes to respond to this situation, the more, senior ranks, the, the more senior are the ranks that the rapists and their mates may rise to. The DART confirmed in its November 2014 report on abuse at ADVA, signed off by Mr Len Robert Smith, and I quote, 
A significant cluster of very serious allegations within defence have never thoroughly been, been investigated and that individuals alleged to have committed or acquiesced in very serious offences have never been called to account. So what must be done? An appropriately commissioned and resourced permanent defence abuse start Sorry, Resource Permanent Defence Abuse Response Task Force, as well as a Royal Commission into Defence Abuse. This would enable victims to disclose the systemic issues that affected them so deeply and give them a voice. Sadly, it remains the government's view that after allegations of abuse by defence personnel after the Defence Abuse Response Task Force was established in April 2011, must be dealt with through existing internal defence mechanisms. This approach is clearly inadequate given the litany of evidence tendered to the task force. Only a permanent investiga investigative body would have the autonomy, authority and standing to unconditionally explore further allegations of sexual and physical abuse committed throughout defence facilities across Australia. Some who experienced this type of abuse during their time in the ADF have been able to move forward because of the DART process. However, many others cannot through no fault of their own. Many have spoken of ongoing impacts, including broken relationships, bouts of serious depression, ruined careers and alcohol and substance abuse. I'm deeply moved by the way these brave men and women were able to recount the events that occurred to them. Just this afternoon, I spoke with one abuse survivor who had served in the Navy in the 1980s. He told me that his time at the ADF was bookmarked by abuse. It started with a sexual assault and it ended in being deliberately electrocuted. He told me it felt like he was being left to wither away. He felt he couldn't stay, but he felt that he couldn't go either. 36 years later, he's had 40 different jobs. He still has trust issues with authority. This survivor was able to make a successful claim with the task force. However, we know that as of October 2015, there were 425 people who had tried to submit a claim with the task force, but were told they couldn't because they were out of time. I fear the 425 people we know about are only the tip of the iceberg. The proud history, traditions, sacrifices made by the Australian Defence Force have played a significant role in forging our national identity. These men and women of the Australian Defence Force, past, currently serving and future, are entitled to be, and deserve to be, treated with the highest levels of admiration and respect. The high esteem that members of Defence Forces are held is clearly demonstrated each year when the nation stops and comes together in the pre-dawn light. We come together to hold vigils, vigils and honour the sacrifices made by our servicemen and women and their contribution to the nation. This reverence of the men and women of the Australian Defence Force is precisely why it is so devastating that such, a tragedy, that such tragedy and pain has been inflicted by members of this respected organisation. A great deal has been done over the last few years to prevent abuse occurring in the ADF, but I believe there is still much more we can do. I believe this parliament must maintain a rigorous and ongoing oversight of what the ADF is doing to protect our service personnel from further abuse. To those individuals who had the bravery to tell their stories in the hope that it would make a difference for the better, I thank you for your courage. Thank you, Senator.